All right. Awesome. Hey, thank you all so much. Um, I'm so honored that I get uh, to walk you through a really cool exercise today that I've been doing for, gosh, 13 years now. Uh, so for 13 years, I've walked myself through uh, this exercise. It's helped create tremendous amount of clarity when I'm looking towards goals that I want to accomplish uh, in the coming year. And because I think uh, actually, I don't think I know that too often we make things way too complicated. And if it's not simple and actionable, uh, we usually don't um, accomplish the goals or the things that we put in place that we want to achieve, especially in a short time frame. So if you're sitting at a desk, if you're in a car, please just don't write this down, just drive. And I saw a couple of people in cars, etc. But uh, if you're sitting at your desk, I want you all to write down that you can't accomplish nearly as much as you think you can in one year. You can't accomplish. No, that sounds really depressing, right? You can't accomplish nearly as much as you think you can in one year. But you can accomplish way more than you think you can over three to five years. You can accomplish way more than you think you can over three to five years. So that was a statement that I disagreed with for a really long time when I first started getting coached, et cetera. And I've learned now after 14 years being coached that like it's 100% true, right? Is that I had to like learn that on my own through failure, uh, through successes, through setbacks. Uh, we usually think that like I could see a show of hands probably. How many of you always say, I'm going to double my income next year? Like I've been that person. I'm going to double my income. And I say it every year, right? Like it can happen a couple times, just so you know. Like it can happen a couple times. But to say that you're going to double your income every single year uh, is unrealistic. And it doesn't happen. And oftentimes we don't think big enough over the intermediate and the long term. And we think way too big in the short term being defined as one year or less. So um, you should all have printed documents uh, with you. If you don't, please stay on. Don't hop off. You'll still have some value in this. But the, doc the first document um, that we're going to focus on um, is going to be called the visual wheel. And I will share my screen to make sure you guys have the correct document in front of you. But this is the order that we're gonna review them in. The first one will be the visual wheel, if you wanna put these in order. Um, the second one is going to be where you are now. Okay, so it goes visual wheel, where you are now. The third one will be uh, where you will be. Okay, where you will be. And then I will go into the vision stuff, purpose questions, et cetera, which is really just bonus. So let's start with um, how to accomplish goals and, and make sure that you can do something that is going to be actionable. So when we're going through and we're going to mark down things that we want to accomplish this next year, we want to make sure that they're going to be really specific. So broad statements don't work very well when we're making any type of goal. So I'll give you an example. If one of our goals um, is to save more money, let's say you write that down. I want to save more money. Um, that usually doesn't work. The brain is like more, what does more mean? So writing down something like, I will save 10% or 20% of my net income. That's way more specific and it's measurable. So with any goal that we make today, we want to make sure that it's going to be specific and that it's going to be measurable. So the first thing I want you to do is take out that visual wheel and I'm going to pull it up right here for you all. Here we go. All right, so this is what the document looks like, okay? This visual wheel here. Let me get rid of this guy. So when we when we start off here, this is like the wheel of life is what we call it. And it's a visual wheel. And there's seven different areas that I always focus on because it's really never just about work. We have to get better in all different areas of our life. And then the work will get better automatically as well. So we want to take some inventory when we're doing this. So the dot that you see that's right in the middle, that black dot in the middle of the page, and then there's the spokes that come off it, that black dot, that is a representation of you. So that is literally you. That is uh, who you are. You are the person. And then the different uh, areas that we're going to focus on. So money, work, self, friends, 
family, love life, spirituality. Those are all the different spokes that are shooting off of you. Now, how we're going to start this is by taking a pen or pencil, and we're going to circle where we're going to rate ourselves in all these different areas. So I'll give you an example. If the hash mark closest to the center, which is you, that would be like a one. So if you're going to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, and you're just like, oh my gosh, everything's miserable in this, not one thing is going right. I'm not doing anything right, et cetera, et cetera. That would be a one. So you would circle the hash mark that is closest to you, right? That would be on a scale of one to 10. Now, if you are a 10 out of 10, which means literally nothing could ever get better, it's impossible, you would circle the hash mark that is the furthest out, that's closest to where it says like work or self, et cetera. Now, before you circle anything, I want you to know that there's no such thing as a 10, okay? So if you are gonna rate yourself a 10 in any of the areas, that's cool, but just circle nine, okay? Because there's always, always, always room for improvement. So the first thing we're going to do here is I want you to go ahead and rate yourselves and circle the hash mark, the spoke in each area that you think represents uh, where you are right now on a scale of one to 10. One being nothing is going good or right in that area. And a 10, once again, being nothing could be better, but you're still just going to circle a nine, even if you're giving yourself a 10. So just take a couple minutes. And if I move too fast on any of this stuff, this is all rough draft stuff, you guys. Okay, so don't don't worry. Be honest with this. Really important. This is the time to be critical. So when you finish, et cetera, feel free just to write in the chat, like done. I can just get an idea of how many people are done with the first step and don't skip steps here. Okay. Don't try to figure out what's going to come next. All right. Very cool. So a bunch of people are done. Awesome. So the second step to this is that I want you to start with one of the areas um, that you circled, right? With where you're at. And then I want you to connect all the dots. So connect all your circles, but don't lift up the pen or pencil from the page. So you got to connect the dots, but you can't lift up the pen or pencil. Cool. So let me uh, see a show of hands. How many are perfectly circle? Thank God. You guys are all flawed like me. That's awesome. So I have been every type of shape you can think of over 13 years in doing this. I've been the ninja star. I've been the almost triangle. I've been the flat tire. I've been the really small, tight circle. I've been in decent sized, you know, larger circle, the oval. So your shape is just going to be unique to you. There's no grading on this like, oh, you got an A, there's a B, there's a C. It's just where you are right now and where you're rating yourself. And everything in life always works like a teeter-totter. It's never really fully balanced no matter what. No matter what. So whatever your shape is, is perfectly fine. Now, when you look at this now, and you see right below on the form, it says, while you're looking at this, like, what's your biggest aha? 
So I want you to write down like, what's your biggest takeaway? What's your biggest takeaway while looking at this? Now, after you write down what your biggest takeaway is, I want you to write down below it, like, why do you, why is that? Why is that? Like, what, why is it your biggest takeaway? Why? So now that you have that document done, what I want you to do is take it, okay, and just put it to the side so that you can still see it. Don't turn it over. Put it to the side so you can still see it. And now we're going to focus on the form where you are now, okay, where you are now. Now in this form, before you write anything in anywhere, et cetera, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it correctly, is that where it says rate one to 10, you're actually not creating new ratings for this. What you're going to do is take the hash mark, like the number that you circled on the wheel. So you have to have your wheel in front of you. And then you're going to go, okay, so in work, um, you know, I wrote down I'm a four. So like I'm a four out of 10. So then I would put four on the rating. So it's just transferring the number that you circled on the visual wheel in each area. So go ahead and go through and just get all the ratings in first. And just to make sure once again that we're doing this right, I'm going to give you an example. So like, here's what mine look like, for example. Okay. So on, you know, friends, I gave myself a nine. So that means that under friends, I gave myself a nine. That's all you're doing. You're just literally going, okay, family, I gave myself a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then on family, I would give myself a seven. That's all you're doing. All right, cool. You guys good to go? Just give me a couple yeses. I'm good. All right, awesome. So this takes a little bit more time as you go through it, but in all of these different areas, it has the seven boxes of life. So you see a box between each of the spokes, work, money, love, life, family, spirituality, which by the way, spirituality is whatever that means to you, whether that's practicing gratitude, whether that's praying to God, whether that, whatever it is, that's whether it's meditating, it's whatever it means to you. There's no predetermined answers for any of this stuff. Friend self. So you have these boxes. I want you to take a little bit of time here, but don't overthink this. Remember, you can always go back and expand on this stuff. This is like the first step of a rough draft that is really going to make it easy for you to create vision, goals, et cetera. But I want you to go through each box and come up with your two biggest challenges or struggles in each of those areas and jot them down.
you know, what are your two biggest challenges or frustrations right now in each of those areas? And remember, if you guys have any questions, I'm checking out the chat as much as I can. Feel free to type something in. All right, I'm not trying to interrupt everyone. We got a question here about, uh, so when we look at money, do you mean, are we happy with bank balances or overall comfort in means? It is an open-ended question, just so you guys know all of this stuff. It's like, so for me, I'll just use myself as an example, right? Like in money, I wrote down, um, my budget has gotten really sloppy, right? Because I've made a lot less money this year. So I just wrote down, my budget has gotten sloppy. That's a big frustration for me right? Is that I've, I've, I haven't changed my budget enough. So simple stuff like that it could mean whatever you want, but these are frustrations or challenges, like maybe not saving 20% or I have debt that I really don't want. Those are the type of things that you would write down. you get stuck on anyone, I would say move on and then just come back to it. But don't overthink this. Whenever you finish, you can just drop a done or, you know, just so I can get an idea if anyone's done.
know, we got about a third of the people done. Take your time. Take a couple more minutes. I'll well, take your time, but feel free to hurry up. It's no big deal. So as you're finishing up, and remember, you can always come back to this. It's no problem. I'm teaching you how to do it, which is more important than just getting it right the first time. That way you can do this as many times as you want. You got the holidays, the next couple of weeks, my favorite time to do this. So just to give you perspective, I've done this three times already from my original one, from Thanksgiving, I always do my first one. And then I just finished my third one today, like this morning. And now I'm like super dialed in. So this doesn't have to be something that is unbelievably clear right now. Knowing what to do is even more important, but then over the next week, like looking at it, refining it, looking at it, refining it, making sure that you didn't write down something that was too emotional, meaning that you're just having a bad day or something happened and you're like, this sucks. Like reevaluating over different days, by the way, is good because we all have high and low emotional states uh, that we go through. So don't worry about if you didn't get through it all. So now that you have filled out or you've attempted to fill out uh, most of this stuff, I want you to write down what the biggest struggle is out of all areas combined. So what area is the biggest struggle? And then what specifically in that area is the number one struggle out of all everything that you wrote down? I hate, I hate using the word struggle for the record. I might change this next year. I like the words like irritation, upset, because I can do something about that. What irritates you that you wrote down? It's bothering you the most that you wrote down. Cool, and then write down why. Why is it the biggest struggle? Why is it bothering you that much? All right, cool. I'll just give you guys like 30 seconds more. Looks like most people are finishing up here. Sean, I'll answer your I will get to it. Your question you put in the chat is definitely part of what I'm going to go over. All right, cool. Is everyone good? Drop me a yes, done, thumbs up, whatever. Cool. All right, great. Remember, you can always come back to this. I'm going to keep saying that throughout this whole process over and over and over again. There should be no anxiety about any of this. Okay, you can always come back to this. Great. All right, so now that you've done the where are you now, okay, you're going to have, um, you're going to put that form to the side, but you still need to look at it, okay? So you're going to have that form put to the side, and now we're going to focus on the where are you now, okay? The where are you now? So when we fill out, the where are you now form, we're going to don't do the ratings. Don't do the ratings. Okay. We're going to do the ratings at the end on this one, because it's a different rating system than what we've just used. So um, I want you to go through on the where um, you will be. So you just finished. Where are you now? Now we're going to focus on the where you will be. Okay. So the where you will be form, I want you to put down like the things you are going to accomplish, the goals that you want to hit, and they have to be specific. But the reason why you need to look at the where you are now form is that you want to solve that challenge that you wrote down or that frustration. So I'm going to give you some simple examples from mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I'll start uh, with uh, work, right? So on work, one of my biggest frustrations I wrote down was um, not enough qualified leads like plenty of leads, but not enough qualified leads, right? So then in the where you will be, 
um, I wrote down, um, teach partners how to screen leads and increase number of referrals per partner, right? So I solved my problem. So what you want to do is write down your goals there that are going to solve the frustration that you had. If you wrote down in work um, or money, for example, I'm just going to give you a couple, like I want to make more money, didn't make enough money. Okay. Let's say that that's one. Then you would write down, I will increase my income by 20%, right? In 2024, or I will increase my income by X, or I will make X dollars, or I will close X transactions. You want to get as specific as possible. If you read the goal on the where you will be, and it has any type of gray area, it is going to be almost impossible to accomplish. Okay, so don't leave any gray area in your answer. So go ahead and fill out those boxes on the where you will be. So this is like the end of the year next year. Think like that. You're looking into the future. It's December 31st, 2024, right? And you did these things. As you're doing it, I'm just going to give you some more examples, okay? So don't let it distract you. Just take it in and listen for what it's worth. Like um, on my family, right, box on where are you now, I wrote down like I don't talk to my dad because I don't enjoy it, right? That was like a big problem I have. So in my goals, I was like I will set a task to call my dad every other Saturday. That way I make sure it's happening, something that really is specific, So you're just filling out the boxes. We're not rating anything right now.
Hey, Doug, this is for you and everyone. If you just wanted to look, uh, Doug said, ah, I shouldn't fill out the boxes. So there's two different boxes, right? There's these boxes. And yes, that's where you want to write down the goals in each area, one and two. I was just saying, you don't have, don't rate them yet. This box over here, the rate importance. That's okay if you did. anyone finishes, feel free just to drop me. I'm done. It's all good. There's no rush here. All right, cool. So as you start wrapping this up and remember, you can always come back to it. It's not, not a big deal like at all. Um, but as you're wrapping this up, now we really want to move towards the um, rating boxes where it says rate one to seven. And this rating system's a little bit different. This is like rating one. Number one would be the number one area in, that you want to work on like the number one area out of all of them that you want to work on the most, the most important area. Okay, so that would be number one. And then two would be the second one, et cetera, et cetera. So they don't have to, it doesn't have to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It could be seven, two, three, six, but you just want to get numbers one through seven on there of importance. Rate the first one, number one, that you want to accomplish the most, that's the most important. Then pick, an area um, of the boxes of life is the areas I'm talking about. Um, pick the second most important one and then the third, et cetera. Just go through and rate them. All right. When you're done rating those one through seven, now just at the bottom where it says, you know, your most important goal to focus on. So that would be the one that you rated number one. I want you to write the area of life, the box that you need to work on the most and 
why is the goal so mo most important to focus on? Like, what's the goal that's the most important to, f to focus on and why? All right, cool. Let me know when you guys are done. Just drop a yep. Good. Done. Don't overthink this. You can always come back to it. So filling out this portion, like the three things we just did, is the least emotional part of this, just so you know. So that's either a good thing, good news or bad news for you, depending on what state you're in, right? Like this is this is the least emotional part of filling this stuff out. All right, I'm getting a bunch of people saying they're done. That's cool. All right, cool. So that is the easiest part of all of this exercise. Now, whenever we're creating these goals, and once again, you're going to go back and you're, you're probably going to edit these, et cetera, and you want to get as specific as possible, like I keep saying on them to make sure that it's crystal clear. So when you read it, you know exactly what the goal is that you are going to be attacking. Now, goals have to be specific, but they also have to be emotionally anchored. That's how the most successful people um, accomplish their goals is they do attach an outcome to it and they can cast that vision on like how it feels to accomplish it in the future right now. Like how did it feel? Oh, it feels so great. Looking into the future, feeling like you actually did it already makes all of the activities that you have to do a lot easier to get there. So there's a document that, um, and I believe I sent this to you as well. I'm going to go ahead and just pull up my screen and share it. Um, that is just a, how to accomplish the goals. And if you didn't get it, you can just, I can send it you a copy. It's no big deal. All right. Let's get this out of here. Cool. So right now, um, we just uh, we just did one, two, and three. So number four is the emotional anchor, right? So an emotional anchor is writing your a letter to yourself a year in advance. So this is casting the vision out one year, right? So I'll just give you an example. Um, it would be uh, December 31st, 2024, right? Like that's how the letter should start. It's December 1st, uh, 31st, 2024. And what you need to go through and do, and you don't have to do it on this call, by the way, I'm not going to sit here and wait for a half hour for you guys to write your letters to yourselves, but this is like a homework assignment. This is part two to it, where I go through and I write a paragraph about each box of life and summarizing the goals that I accomplished, right? So I can give you some examples that will make it really easy. This is what like a letter would sound like paraphrasing it. It would be like, hey, and I'll just freestyle because I've done this so many times. It's like, hey, it is uh, December 31st, 2024, and I just had an incredible year, right? At work, uh, we closed uh, 240 transactions and got to help uh, 240 families purchase a new home. It was so fulfilling. It was full of challenges, but it was really, really great that we accomplished what our goal was to close and help 240 families purchase a new home. Um, you can talk about your income goals. You know, we made over $1 million net income. It felt so good to break that huge barrier that we've always been chasing. So put as much emotion into it 
as possible and how it made you feel to accomplish it as you already have done it. Um, on my love life, I would say Kara and I have been married for uh, 22 years and we fall more in love each and every day. I love spending time with her and we took our basic dates that were getting boring and dull and we had some really fun dates like going to the gun range together and playing mini golf. Just breaking up the monotony made a huge difference in our connection. So that's an example of like a love life paragraph. Um, money, right? It could be, um, we did really, really well with our money this year. We cut our budget down because we were spending too much last year and we were able to save 20% right, of our net income. So I think you guys are getting the picture, yeah? Like that is how you're gonna write this letter to yourself dated one year in the future, the end of 2024, summarizing all the goals that you wrote down and that you accomplished, how you did it and how it made you feel, okay? Now, the trick here with this is not just writing down a bunch of goals and writing a letter and then crossing your fingers and hoping it's gonna happen. Okay. Like that, that is not the jam. That is like the first step. It's like, let me see a show of hands. Everyone's heard of the book, the secret, you know, where if you think it, it's going to happen. Totally not true. Just so you know, like literally that it's great marketing, but that is like the first book of two books. It should have been called the secret to the secret because part two is you got to do all the damn work as well. Like you can't just think that you're going to own an Island in the middle of the ocean and then the island just pops up out of the middle of the ocean. You have to, you can manifest things like you really can, but it takes like a lot of hard, diligent work and actions every single day to get there. So here's the real secret is doing all of these goals, typing them up, making them really, really clean, actionable. I personally keep them um, in like a note folder. I have a Word document, a PDF document. I print all the goals that I want to accomplish in all these different areas of my life. Um, and then I laminate them like multiple copies and I take them with me literally wherever I go. So I have a copy that's right here taped on the back of my door. I have one under my keyboard here. I have one in my backpack. I have one at my desk at my house. You have to keep them visual around you so that you will look at them, be forced to look at them Every day is perfect, but at least a few times a week. So even when I don't read it, like if I, when I go out of my um, office, when we're done with this recording, I have other things to do, of course, but I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I see it and it makes me think about, oh yeah, I got to like focus on that. So keeping it around you and Sean, you asked this question, like, how do you make sure that you keep them like top of mind um, is critical. I do the same thing with the letter that I write myself. So I gave you just a one-year letter exercise. I have a one and a five-year letter, okay? A one and a five-year letter. So of like all the stuff I accomplished over a five-year time frame, as well as all the stuff I accomplished in the one-year time frame. So keep the letter with you as well with those documents, laminate them, make it like hard for it to rip or get wet and it won't get messed up. Like I could spill coffee on mine and it's still going to be okay. I can just wipe it off and I can still have it and read it rather than you spill coffee on it and you go, oh, no problem. I can just print a new one and you forget to do it. And three months goes by. And then you realize that you haven't looked at any of the goals and you haven't been working towards the things that you said were super duper important to you. So that's one trick that I do, Sean, that you asked is um, I make them really clean, really specific. And a second trick that I do is, and that you can all do, is that when you write out a goal, so let's say save 20% of my income next year, right? There's probably four or five things that you need to actually do to save that 20%. Right. Like it's not just like save 20%. Like I need to cut my eating out budget. I need to buy, you know, make it a thousand dollars a month. I'm just using random numbers. Right. So I take the actual goal and then I usually have three to five bullet points of actions that I need to take to accomplish that goal. So when I'm done with my list on a Word doc and in my notes, it's, it's like four pages because all the seven areas have two goals and they all have three to five bullet points under each goal of the actions like that I have to take to move towards that goal. So that's a lot simpler, by the way, than making a 20 page business plan, I promise you. So just think of it like that. The goal, this is what I'm going to do, three to five action points under it, right? Laminate all of those documents. 
carry them with you wherever you are, put them in multiple places. So you see them all the time, read the letter to yourself all the time. It's going to anchor things for you emotionally and will drive you into action a lot easier than like, I'll give you a great example, right? Let's say that we've all worked with annoying people, right? Annoying clients, we can all agree. It just happens. It's part of like our job. Like, so when I look sometimes at my goals and I'm like, I want to serve and help 240 families a year uh, in the next 12 months, get into real estate. And I have to call back like the, this person who's really annoying, just hard to deal with, difficult. Like I remind myself that the goal is to help 240 families. My goal wasn't to help only the families that are really easy to work with and understand everything, right? So it helps me just by seeing it and going, okay, listen, I got to call that person back fast. Like I have to get on this. Like my goal is my act, my actions aren't in alignment with my goal, right? So it just helps me keep my actions in alignment with what the goal is by seeing it all the time. Right. When I don't feel like making the extra call, when I don't feel like knocking on doors, when I don't feel like going out on a date because I feel like I go on dates all the time, but it's different to my wife because her love language is quality time. Right. Like, like, so for me, I'm like, we could go on a date for 22 minutes. And I'm like, that was awesome. It was super fun. We had a great time. Like, she's like, it needs to be like a three hour thing. And we got to like go to a place, but that's her love language. So I remind myself of that in my goals, right? That, hey, I need to plan some more fun dates so that I don't have, I don't get bored like an hour and a half in and thinking about like what else I can do. Like, so little things like that will help you if you carry it with you uh, wherever you are. Um, let's see, is there any trick? So Carlos said, screenshot it and save it as your computer desktop background. I love that. That's a great idea, Carlos. And I know you've done this um, exercise a lot too in the past. So that's a great idea. So Carlos said, trick is like, take a screenshot and save it as your computer background, right? Like, like so that you just see it every time you open up your computer. I love that. So I'm going to move on from a, um, like we just covered, like that's the basics. And by the way, the basics is enough. Okay. The basics is enough for you to accomplish all those things and do really well next year. Um, now I'm going to just walk you through and you're not going to do a bunch of work on this. Okay. So this is more of just an overview. And if you ever wanted to explore this more, this is something that you could do. It's going to take way longer than we just did, but it's called a VTO. So a VTO stands for a vision traction organizer. Okay. A vision traction organizer organizer. And I've used this for my um, short-term and long-term goals for a very long time as well. And it just provides more clarity for you as you go through and you are making big goals. And we all talk about vision all the time, but we don't really know like, well, how do we get there? Like, like how do you create like a really good vision? And the reality is that vision just comes down to eight um, really good questions. Okay. So it's just eight really, really good questions. So I'm going to give them to you. If you guys want a copy of any of this stuff, I can send them to you as well. I know I sent you some questions to ask yourself about like purpose. So you can figure out core values. That's just like a step within these eight questions. Um, but I'm happy to send you any form that you want. We can set up one-on-one -on -one time, whatever you need. We can do another group training on it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you what the eight questions are. Where are you at? There you go. Let's get rid of this guy. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Perfect. Come on, Zoom. There you go. All right, so I'm happy to send this document to all of you. Uh, thank you for attending, by the way. Like, here's what's really funny, right? So 127 people said, yep, I can't wait to be on this. You are all the ones that are actually going to do something about it. And just think about that. Like, in your job, especially, we all say there's a lot of competition, this and that. People can't even show up to something for free that could potentially change their life. So you guys are way ahead of the curve, and I really appreciate you guys being here. So this is the uh, Vision Traction Organizer, eight questions, okay? 
And so I summarized all of this for everyone. Uh, that way you don't have to take like a two day class. Like I, Whoa. Hey, now can you uh, mute yourself? Whoever you are, I appreciate that. So um, like I went through rather, I took a two day class on this. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and I summarized it though. And you don't need to take a two day class. Okay. If you just follow this, I promise. So the first, the eight questions um, is really, really simple. And when you go through here, it says every team member of your leadership team must agree on the answers. Most of us are single owner operators, like in our business. So that could mean a team of one, right? It could just be you answering all of this stuff. I don't want you to get confused when you're reading it going like, oh, a leadership team. Like how do, do I need to form a leadership team? No, you do not. Right. Um, but if you do have a leadership team, so that means if you have like a right hand person, right, that works with you, et cetera, that you they these things have to be clear and, and people do have to agree on them. If you have other people that make big decisions in your business, but let's just focus on this as we are owner operators, right, in our business and we're in charge of like creating the vision and casting the vision and what's important to us. So uh, question number one is, you know, what are your core values? OK, that's question number one is what are your core values? Uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Now, to understand what your core values are, by the way, those are the questions that I sent out in advance to you, right? That I sent out asking yourself about purpose and what's important to you. So use those if you're having trouble identifying like what your core values are. So the three to seven characteristics that uniquely define the team, company, and culture, okay? That's what you need to come up with first. What are your core values? The three to seven characteristics that uniquely define the team, company, and culture, okay? The second, um, how do I get this little window out of here? Sorry, guys. Get out of here. Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, so the second question is, um, what is your core focus? So this would be like your sweet spot in your business, right? Like, what am, what am I focused on? Um, you know, what are, what are some things that I really wanna focus on in my business? Like, where are my sweet spots uh, that are easy to implement, right? And you have to agree on this if you do have a right-hand person, because if you have other people that are in charge of like making decisions with you in your business, if you're not in agreement, there's always going to be conflict and it's going to be impossible to create the right vision. So it's just coming up with, um, you know, a couple of sweet spots for your core focus. So I'll give you an example and I'll show you mine filled out, by the way. Um, so mine would be like um, first time home buyers, you know, realtor partners and loan officers, right? That would be like three sweet spots that I'm looking for, for my core focus in my business, like over the next year. Now, the question number three is kind of crazy. And this is where people can get really confused. It's like, what's your 10 year target? So it goes into going way out and thinking way out 10 years out. What do you want things to look like from a profitability standpoint? Um, like from a, um, what you're accomplishing uh, income wise, um, how many families that you're helping, how many customers that you serve. Like, it's just like big thinking 10 years out. Income, families help, transaction count, simple, simple stuff like that. Okay, so, and everyone, once again, it says must agree on it, but we're doing this as an owner operator, which is how I prefer to do it anyway. Um, and I've always done this on my own. And then I share it with some of the people on my team to make sure they're clear with what my vision is and that they can buy into it. The four is like, what is your marketing strategy? Okay, question four is like, what's my ideal target market? Uh, what are three um, uniques that the team uh, is selling and telling the world? Uh, proven processes for doing business with customers. So this would be like the, the systems that you wanna set up, where you wanna be really good, what you wanna be known for, and what's your pledge or promise to customers? Okay, what's your pledge or promise to customers? Number five is what is your three-year picture? So I want you to notice that it goes from 10-year to three-year, right? And the reason it starts out way out is because your three-year should be like on your way there, right? But if we start out really big, we have to make sure that what we're writing down in our three-year A is going to be less than that 10-year outlook and also that it's in congruence with steps to get there.
Okay. And I'll show you guys an example and I'll send all of this to you. Um, now, three year picture, it says, what's the revenue, profit, measurable goals, right? The team wants to achieve uh, in the next three years. Paint a picture of how the organization will look in three years, just five to 15 bullet points, like really, really simple descriptors. Um, number six is what's your one year plan? So, once again, we started at 10 and then it goes three and then it goes one. Right. So it's moving backwards. The one year plan should be really simple and you probably could do it in just a couple minutes because you just did all this other work with your vision and the areas of your life with the wheel of life. So we want to make sure that we work backwards then uh, to what the one year plan is. What's the revenue in one year, the profit, the measurable goals for next year, uh, three of the seven most important things um, that you agree that you want to get done in the coming year. Number seven is what are your quarterly rocks? So this is where it's breaking it down to where now you've gone, okay, I know what my yearly goals are. Like, what do I need to get done in the next quarter, right? To move, what are the tasks that I have to do to move towards those one year numbers? Um, number eight is my favorite. It's the issues list. And it's, it's funny because I say it's my favorite. It's the least favorite to anyone that I've taught or done this with, or I, I don't want to talk about the issues. I don't want to seem vulnerable. Like I don't want to, well, guess what, man, that's where all the money is, is like, how can I fix the issues to get to these goals and accomplish these things? So don't ever fudge on what the real issues are identify what your weaknesses are, identify market threats, identify things that are a problem that you really want to fix. Or if they're not a problem, just that you want to get better at, because we can be better at any of these things. And it will have a really, really good um, uh, uh, impact like on our uh, actual businesses. So I'll just show you what it looks like. And then um, I'm going to set you all free and I want you to take this next week, like through the holidays, refine your visual wheel, refine the where you will be, write yourself the letter. And then if you want to go deep into any of this vision stuff, um, start to mess around with it. And if you just reach out to me, I'd be happy to go over it with you uh, in depth and you can create a really clear one for yourself. So let me show you what the vision looks like. Here it is, a blank one. Here's my people. So here's what it looks like when you answer all those questions I just went through is you can literally just use the organization's name. Um, you would put like your name, right? The vision, This is these are the core values right, that we talked about as part of the exercise and the questions. Uh, your purpose, cause, or passion. Like that is one of the questions that it asks you. Like, what do you stand for? What do you want to be known for? It's giving you a really easy roadmap to come up with a mission statement for yourself. The 10-year target, that's like your crazy big goal. Like I want to do a billion dollars of loans in a year, right? That's my crazy target uh, that I have. Like I want to do a billion dollars of loans in a year. Uh, your target market, these would be your three uniques that I talked about. These are specific to you. I gave the examples of like first-time home buyers, loan officers, and realtor partners, right? Your marketing strategy. Um, these are the people that you uh, have proven processes around, et cetera, that works. So you just go through this one by one. And then in the second page, it goes down to your one-year plan, right? Your goals for the year. And you can add sales here, of course. You can do up to 15. And then these rocks are the measurables. And I always put in the first quarter, what do I need to accomplish based on over here on the right hand side of what the issues are, what the issues list looks like. So when you fill it out, it ends up looking just like this. There we go. And once again, I can help any of you with this if you want. We can do another session, but I would really play around with this yourself, like to figure out how it works. So it's like, you know, 2024 Team Forcier, this is what, you know, I'm looking to do. Um, my core values are authenticity, integrity, do what's right, clarity, communicate clearly, servant. Everyone is our customer and we serve people first. 
And number five is fun. Because if I'm not having any type of fun, like I just hate everything. So these are my core values personally. I'm going to warn you, do not copy someone's core values. Do not put in chat GPT, like what are the best core values to be successful? Do not Google, like what are the best core values? It shit won't work. Okay, because this has to be specific to you. This has to be specific to you. This has to be an exercise that you go through. There's no right or wrong answers, right? So when we go into the core focus, like the passion through answering those questions, like I, I wrote down to impact and prove like the life of others through wealth creation while providing great advice in, um, in responsible home ownership. Uh, I want to lead loan officers that want to know how to run their own business. My niche is residential home loans that close in 20 days or less. Really simple right? Just exactly what is the purpose? What's the cause? What's the passion? That is it for me. 10-year target, $6 billion company when 100 million of my personal production. So I want to keep my personal production the same, but I want to grow, right? My company, my team, my focus, other salespeople to $6 billion annually, like in a 10-year target. Um, target market, right? I put North Bay, California, Sonoma, Marin, Napa, Solano, and then I put US LOs. So loan officers all across the US. Um, my three unique borrowers, right? Are first time buyers, loan officers, jumbo move up market. My three unique business partners are real realtors, financial services, that's CPAs, financial planners, attorneys, et cetera, and corporate benefits program, like affinity program. My proven process is helping others achieve their goals through coaching. I coach. So I'm going to help everyone and help coach people or mentor people that want help mastermind collaborate. So that is like my proven process is helping others through coaching. I won't go through everything else. You can, I mean, you can get the, the gist here. I think it breaks down the three year goal in date. Uh, what I want um, my numbers to be as far as uh, volume annually, personally, and then volume annually uh, for all the loan officers and everyone that I'm training, building, uh, that I coach. And then it goes to my favorite is the one-year plan. Just what is your one-year plan? Well, next year, right? I want to make $2 million. It's the minimum, maximum 5 million. Now you might ask yourself a question when you're looking at this and go, why is there like a minimum and a maximum? Why is there like a big gap there? Because that is what's called the market, just so you know. The market is like, I don't know, man, is it like foreclosure is going to like go through the roof all of a sudden? Is the economy going to tank and are rates going to drop significantly? And is everyone going to buy? Is there going to be inventory? So when you're making these, the minimum maximum is like, I'm going to make this no matter what, period, no matter how I have to, what I have to do. And then the max would be like, I don't know if the market just goes crazy and like I can do, you know, 100 loans a month great. Like, well, then we'll take it. So that's what minimum and maximum is when you're looking at it. Don't make it really tight is my point. Okay. Don't make it like I want to make 250 minimum, 300 maximum. Don't do that. Okay. Make it a big gap because the gap is the market that you can't control. All right. The gap is the market. Um, and then all my goals are just listed here. Really, really clear, right? What I want to accomplish by next year. The rocks are the things that I want to fix right? That I know I need to do every single week on a weekly basis. And then my issues are all listed, right? Clear to close on the first submission so that loan docs can get out the first time, like collection of docs up front, standardized process for all my branches and loan officers that they all buy into and they all follow, right? Um, accountability. We need more coaching and accountability. I'm pretty soft on people. I think um, they might say different, but I think I'm pretty soft on people at the end of the day. Um, training, right? For attitude, like attitude training is a big deal. I don't think I do enough of it. CCRs is current client referrals. Like how do I generate one referral from each client that I currently have? Like rather than always going chasing new leads, like why, how do I get one referral from every client that I currently have? So this is just a little bit of insight as to what it could look like when you go through the process and you really dial it in. So um, if anyone has any questions, by the way, uh, that is it. That's what I got for you today. The rest is on you to do the work, mess with, do rough drafts, see what works best for you. And then of course, if I can help you personally in any way, I'm more than happy to meet one-on-one, -on -one, do a Zoom meeting. We can do another training. If there's like a bunch of interest in the vision traction organizer, that's totally cool too. So is there anything I can help any of you with while I still got you before we sign off here? You can unmute yourself if you want, by the way, now. It's all good.
Thanks, Deborah. I appreciate that. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm going to count to five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. That was super fun. If you guys need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. I'll talk to you soon. If you want any additional forms, et cetera, please let me know and don't waste the opportunity that's in front of you. Okay. Have a great uh, weekend. Merry Christmas to everybody.